raw vlogs, raw vloggy dog. That's cringy, right, let's do the video. Today, I've not really got a lot planned. I just kind of like pick the camera up, sun is blinding me, even with a cap and me, um, yeah, I'm just filming whatever happens today and uh, I'm training legs. I want to touch on a little bit about my leg train at the minute because let's just say it's far from ideal. Right, the voiceover, this first clip makes me laugh, to be fair. I mean, if you just look at how much the bench is rocking around, I don't know why. I just find that quite funny. But uh, yeah, soon I identified the problem, put a couple of five kilo plates on the other side of the bench and that did seem to make that quite a lot better. So first exercise being the leg extension. It's not the best leg extension in the world, but you know, whatever, it will do. Five sets of 10 to 15 reps, so higher volume. In this lockdown, whilst I don't have, you know, access to the best equipment or enough weight to create the intensity I want, I have been manipulating my training volume just to make up for that. So yeah, 10 to 15 reps over five sets with this. This clip, by the way, just, makes me laugh a little bit as well because the camera is actually falling down and it kind of looks like someone's filming the set. So yeah, it's probably not that funny. It's just me thinking so it's funny that it's not. Anyway, next exercise is the lying leg curl. So a common mistake people make with this is flexing their ankles. If you perform dorsiflexion with your ankle in this movement, that's gonna take away a lot of the tension away from the hamstrings and onto the calves. So it's best to perform plantar flexion rather than dorsiflexion. So bear that in mind, you know, if you didn't already know that and you'll be able to keep the tension on the targeted muscle. And it's so important if you want to grow a muscle to stay accurate with your training and actually connect to the targeted muscle that you know, you're trying to, stimulate anyway so yeah another 10 to 15 reps with that over five sets so this session was like a pre-exhaustion session i know some people say that when they do leg extensions and line leg curls it's not pre-exhaustion and it's uh, just getting the knee joints warm i couldn't disagree with that anymore like if you're taking sets till failure on an isolation before a compound lift you know you don't have to take a lift till failure on an isolation to get your knee joints warm. Like that is ridiculous. Like if you're doing like one set or something where you're not going till failure, then yeah, I understand it. But if you're doing two or three sets of going all out till failure, you know, that's pre-exhaustion, at least in my opinion. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Anyway, after that, did some barbell back squats, nothing heavy, just worked up to sets of eight to 10, just accumulating a lot of volume the heaviest i went was only actually 120 kilos which is obviously not heavy at all in relative to my strength i've done a lot more heavier working sets with that in that rep range but obviously after not doing any barbell squats in quite a long time i don't want to be going in there and absolutely killing myself so anyway after doing a few sets of eight with 120 i then did some sumo deadlifts obviously not done this in a while i've not really done much hip hinging at all only some like 40 kilo dumbbell RDLs at home, which is obviously not quite the same as doing a heavy hip hinge with a barbell. But, you know, I'm just kind of grateful to do a little bit of this um, in this facility. Obviously, again, I've not gone too heavy or anything, just worked up doing sets of five to six, only went up to 160 kilos. So nothing, you know, not breaking records by any means. <sighs> So the voiceover is done, even though I've not actually done it yet. I don't know if I ended up just like blabbering a load of rubbish or I said a few useful things. But anyway, now, um, oh, oh, that was not ideal. The camera about hit me in the flipping, you know what? Right, it's an if it fits your macros day, meaning that as long as you eat your protein requirements, hit your calories, you can eat whatever you want. Big fan of flexible dieting. So what we've got, chicken tikka baguette. I could only get a six foot one because apparently there weren't enough chicken. Probably scared I'm getting too big. We've got some oven baked crisps because if you like crisps or a cookie, I don't fancy a cooker. And I've got some diet coke rather than full fat coke because I'm not after diabetes. So I'm gonna eat this and then train. So it's the next day and it's meant to be a rest day, but I'm here doing five sets of biceps. I literally sound like such a bro, don't I? But there's rationale behind it. Basically, 
as my subscribers will know, I've increased my frequency on my biceps training. And I was hitting them on push days as well as pull days. But I feel like when I'm getting on to doing biceps after all my pressing, I'm quite fatigued. and I'm probably not getting too much out of the biceps. So what I'm doing is actually hitting them on rest days. as I feel like it's not too demanding on the body. And it's going to be easier for me to get more out of the biceps. A few moments later. So that is probably going to be the only cardio I do all year. But anyway, we need to get on with the video and establish whether I've been skipping legs or not. So kind of, kind of not. Let me explain. So it's not like I've just been not turning up for my leg sessions, but you know, I do question the intensity I'm training at and I also have to admit that there's some leg sessions that I've not even finished and I've got like halfway through and then just sacked it off. And this is like completely not like me, but I'm putting this down to one main factor. And I think, you know, to be consistent at the gym, a lot of people kind of put it down to desire, dedication, discipline, and don't get me wrong, those factors are very key to being consistent and making gains in the gym. But to me, there's like one bigger factor. And that is just simply enjoying training. If you enjoy to train and you look forward to training, you're never gonna have any problems in terms of getting motivated for the gym. Like you don't rely on external points of motivation. Like for me, going to the gym is literally just like brushing my teeth. It's just my routine. It's like something I don't have to think about. I just do it. It's like when I wake up in the morning, I just like look forward to training. That's my favorite part of the day. So I've never had a problem of motivation or consistency in the gym. It's always been there. But now that the gyms have shut, obviously everything has changed in terms of how I train. And upper body sessions have been fine at home. I've been enjoying them. However, legs has been literally, I'm not even gonna lie, it's an absolute chore. Like I don't get a buzz out of doing like a 50 kilo lunge or a 40 kilo split squat or you know, the 40 kilo dumbbells on an RDL. I don't get a buzz out of that. I get a buzz out of not necessarily going like heavy and doing like five rep maxes and things like that, but I get a buzz out of taking big movements and you know increasing reps in like the eight to 12 rep range. That's what I get like a buzz out of. I'm not saying this by the way to be negative and moan and things like that. Like I'm just saying this more to be transparent because I know a lot of people are like just relying on gyms to open soon and like as am I. And I know we've got a date now, the 12th of April, so like just around the corner and like we're all buzzing to get in there. But I feel like there's a lot of people that are struggling with motivation at the minute and you know, they're doing the sessions and they're like, is this even doing much? And it's just not enjoyable. And they probably see me say, post things on social media, on my YouTube, and it might look like, you know, I'm having the best time and things like that. And don't get me wrong, when I'm training upper body, like, sessions have been good but anyway i should probably stop telling you how like poor my leg sessions have been because who actually cares and uh yeah gyms are open soon so we can just you know look forward to that and i'm looking forward to just getting on some proper kit again and progressing because i feel like not just how my leg sessions have been bad but that kind of shows in my physique as well like i've definitely lost a bit of muscle in my legs anyway that's pretty much all i wanted to say other than that gym that i was training at earlier in that voiceover section of the video that isn't my gym, that is somebody else's and I just trained there for a one-off, so yeah. Been training here, doing the stuff I don't like, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not gonna keep repeating myself because I probably have like 100 times already. Legs hasn't been great, but whatever, I've still turned up, done a little bit. Gym's open on the 12th of April, like I said, we are gonna make some mad gains, probably not that mad, but we'll make some gains. And yeah, that's just me being transparent. I know, you know, a lot of people on social media will just post loads of home workouts and say, do this, do that, and this is great, and reality, it's not. Anyway, yeah, that's the end of the video. Please like it if you enjoyed it, comment your thoughts, let me know if you've been training legs or not through lockdown. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace and love, by the way. Laters.